the final game of the campaign. Yes, it's Wales against Slovenia. And what an atmosphere they've got built in here, Abby. It's absolutely buzzing. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Just one point required from Gemma Granger's side this evening. Over 12,000 fans expected to be here. The party atmosphere is really, really starting to build. The anticipation, the excitement, it's all starting to come together now. But before we get into tonight's action, let's find out what happened when the FAW attended Pride. So Pride for me is a really personal thing. I myself come from the LGBTQ plus community. So as I said, the pansexual flag I've got behind me, very, very special thing to me, a very personal thing. So I myself started uh, the Proud Swans alongside someone else called Andrew. We're offering people in the LGBTQ plus community to come into our stadiums and come to our grounds. But in actuality, football's never really done anything for this community. And that goes for all the other minority communities. So why are we expecting people to take that first step? I think there's a more serious idea now, especially you can see the rolling back of LGBT rights across the, across the globe. I think there's a growing transphobic voice in the UK. And I think having festivals like this shows the LGBT community for what they are. It's people trying to live their lives, be who they want to be, and love, love who they want to love. That, it's as simple as that, really. The FAW felt that it was really important for us to be a Pride this year because I think over the years, back in sort of 2014 when it first started, there wasn't many people that were a part of it. And I think now there's over 60, 70 LGBTQ plus supporters groups in the UK. Um, and that's just in football. And that's the first initial step for us to then hopefully get in more and more people to come to our stadiums and realise that, you know, we are people first. We're not just people in suits in boardrooms. I've worked for FW for nearly 10 years now and recently we brought in a couple of people, Karis and Jason Weber, on the equality side of it, we've really elevated that. So I think, yeah, just to show that we're an organisation who support the LGBT community and hopefully that gets projected outwards as well. Sometimes it takes an ally to really get something done. Um, and you know, that's the same in football. There's so many people in football and there's so little LGBTQ plus representation in the game that that allyship really makes people feel safe and welcome. I've always known the Red Bull to be a really supportive group of people and I think it's just projecting our outwards to show people who may have maybe nervous about going to football games before that they're welcome to watch Wales games. In the Red Wall, we have the Rainbow Wall, we have Amar Henry, you know, we have our Wild Gokhan Many Ward groups. They're all different bricks in that wall, and each of those bricks makes up our Red Wall, and that's why it's so strong. So, you know, if we have a crack in that wall because people are not willing to be allies of these communities, obviously that creates a crack through the whole fan base and through what we are trying to build in this culture in football. to do incredible things within the community and joining me is Vanessa, one of the coaches. Hi Thank you for joining me. Okay. Tell me about your amazing club. I know you've started in 2019 and you've just grown and grown so much over the years, haven't you? Yeah, over the last three years the club's grown massively. We've got over 200 members now and um, we've even just started up at age three to five year group because we were getting so much interest um, from the public, which is fantastic. And what was the reason in the first place starting the club? Just to have some more options for girls um, playing football, um, so just kicking the ball around, trying to get into a fun, competitive environment and just give them a place to play and um, play football. And what an occasion we have this evening. You've got over 150 girls here attending the match. How special is tonight for them? Oh, it's brilliant for them. It's great to see the girls playing. We had a couple of the Welsh players come to training a couple of weeks ago to sign autographs and to meet the girls, so they can't wait to see them in action. It's fantastic. Well, I'm sure they're going to have an incredible night. And here are some of the girls now. So girls, how much are you looking forward to this evening? You've got all of you, the whole club, come here to support Wales Women. How much are you looking forward to it? Oh, brilliant. No words can describe it. It's amazing just to come and see a country play, and especially women. It's amazing. And what about you, girls? Of course, you're part of Caffili Dragons. What do you love about football and, and being a part of this club? I, I just love the community and the passion of it. It's absolutely an amazing atmosphere especially now with women's football on that. And what can we expect tonight? What are you looking forward to most? Uh, winning. Yeah, winning. 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 Yeah. A record break.
kicking crowd as well. That's just phenomenal for, for women and girls football, isn't it? To see so many come out and support the team this evening. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Oh, I'm too excited. <laughs> Can I get a big come on, Cymru? Come on, Cymru! Now, we love following the work that Goal at Cymru, the Wales charity of the fans do right here in Wales and abroad. And of course, the Red Ball are gearing up for Qatar later this year. But first, let's head back to June to find out why Gold Cymru linked up with the Cruyff Foundation in Rotterdam. We all talk about how great the Red Wall is and, and Wales away and that, you know, that's that little secret which is no longer a secret. But it's great to see that, you know, obviously it's, it's, a, it's, it's we're doing something great here that is actually standing out, you know in terms of uh, visiting foundations like this. You know what it's like with golf, very transparent, so all the money we raise at the parties, fans see straight the way that pretty much we take that money and we're taking it to the charities um, and they can see where the money's being spent. I love football, but for me, this is icing on the cake, you know, Paul Cymru is fantastic. So the Crowd Foundation was founded 25 years ago by the uh, late Johan Crowd, one of the legendary most legendary uh, football players ever. And the Care Foundation is mostly focused on um, children with disabilities or with special needs um, to make sure that they can be active as well and be part of, um, of communities and, and society and, and make sure that they uh, can invest in, in a healthy uh, lifestyle. But also to make sure that they have the possibility to make new friends and there's no better way than do that through, uh, through sports and play. So we have almost 200 um, community sports fields like this in, in the Netherlands and we have another 50 uh, around the world in, uh, in more than 20 other countries. My role is to find uh, as many as possible companies to do activities on this playground. Uh, it could be uh, football but also uh, more cultural events, uh, drums. Everything is possible because we we want to uh, have the courts for all people who live in the neighborhood, so young people but also old people. And um, yeah, we try to uh, um, reach as many as possible companies, uh, football clubs, but also uh, social workers and neighbors who want to uh, create an event. One of the things that Johan Cruyff was very much a fan of was um, to make sure that people connect to each other. And I think this, this positive vibe that you, that you guys as Wales fans are, are, are spreading here and, and leaving behind, um, I think it's also something to um, pretty close to the vision of your one. Eh? Um, stay humble, be nice to each other, connect, uh, make sure that you integrate a little bit in, in wherever you are. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's wonderful. I, I, w I would have wished that we uh, would do that as Dutch fans, but uh, maybe we can introduce it. It's a great example. Welsh football is the, the biggest it ever has been at the moment and, and obviously I don't see that dying off any soon. Um, so we'll keep doing this, we'll keep throwing the parties, keep raising as much money as we can um, and then we'll make sure it goes into good hands in the countries we play. If anyone wants to get involved, you know, we're, we're, we drop, drop us a message, you know, we're, we're, always, a, we're always around, we're always a miles away. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to get involved, they've got mods to visit or, or, you know, things like this, then crack on. <laughs> So then, I'm joined by Penny Haley and other members of the Red Wall as well. Penny, just start off by telling us about what is in your hand right now. Ah, so we've got a Well Gorkman Award uh, song sheet. And so at the last match, we'd organised a group booking and a few chants came out for the first time. So I thought, oh, should we get a few more going? And so we put out a call on Twitter through our website, but also through the Wales Women's Fan Group that Holly runs there. And we got all of these sent in, so we thought that we would put them all together to try and get some songs going for this crucial match. Little did we know that 12,000 people would be turning up. And you're somebody who has been, you know, banging this drum for so, so long now. You've done so much good for the women's game. You must feel that there is so much reward in what we're seeing at the moment. Well, I think this started with jazz back in the Pharaohs. Um, we were out there and there were five, five of us. Five, yeah. 
and it was like well there's not much information what do we do how do we get there and so we just started organizing mostly around the away games and taking photos and showing we were there so other people could just see that what was going on and just to see it growing into this amazing i think the euros obviously helped good tv coverage obviously helped quality tv coverage helped um, so yeah we're very pleased that this is taken off it's not about us it's about the team having support from our point of view i think most definitely and hayley just finally you touched upon it inclusivity is crucial isn't it it is and i do think you know it needs to be more needs to be done as well but i'm not sure how you know a lot needs to be done but also sometimes if we meet we get knocked back several you know several steps and i just think it's important that people come together and just help improve the game and as you can see the atmosphere is really really starting to build behind me we've even got a band getting involved the stewards are dancing along to it we're gonna go dance along to it let's get into kickoff shall we Great feeling, not gonna lie. I'm very relieved. I think we had chances to obviously win the game, but um, to grind out that draw and to make it incredibly difficult um, for Sabina is a great feeling. I think this is built upon years and years of hard work and graft, so it, it feels great to get that step closer to where we want to be. After the game on Friday, um, you know, it was unreal to get my first goal, but this means a whole lot more, you know, to reach the playoff rounds, to create history in front of a record-breaking crowd. I think there's such a bigger purpose to this, and yeah, I'm honestly over the moon right now. There's no better feeling than singing your national anthem in front of all those fans. It's amazing, and to hear them singing throughout the game was such a big lift for us, and it was, it was amazing. I just hope that the fans stick with us. I think that's the start. We obviously had to grind out a result, but hopefully in the future we'll be playing exciting football and really opening up teams and been great to watch as well. So we are here with some very excited Wales fans. How happy are you after that one? Uh, very, yeah. Ed, did you enjoy the game? Yeah. Was it your first Wales game? Yeah. Yeah. Who impressed you the most on the pitch? Um, I thought Sophie Ingle was solid in the midfield. Um, yeah, Hayley Ladd, Slab Ed, you know. You got Sophie Ingle's shirt, so how do you feel? Really excited. Yeah? Is she your favourite player? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what did you enjoy the most about that game? I don't know, all of it. Just got through to the playoffs of the World Cup. How excited are you after that game? I was, I was so, so excited. excited. I, my throat's probably going <laughs> to, probably lo lost it my voice really by talking. at the end. Yeah, uh -huh. Laura shouted I guess then girls, yeah? yeah. yeah. And is this, is this your first time to a Wales? It's um, my second. Second? My second. First. Second. First. So you've got a connection with Sophie Engel. Yeah, she used to play outside our our gate with her nieces, with her nephews um, when she was younger, before she did. Yeah, 
and she clearly remembers you by bringing over the shirt. Yes, and I, and I can say hello to her mother at the same time. Yep, yeah, she's great. How was your experience overall today? It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It was so exciting. Come on, Wales! It's a massive reason why we're kind of inspired to do what we can do and kind of make history. Obviously, we want to create a better future for, for young girls and boys playing football in Wales. So hopefully we can inspire a few more people tonight and, and carry on doing that as well. For the young girls who came to the game, I'd say thank you for coming for starters. You know, support means the, means the most. Keep playing football, keep enjoying the game. Just keep smiling and work hard and keep coming to our games because there's a lot more to come. And then for the ones that came before me, I just don't really know what to say, but thank you. Thank you so much. Like I'm so, so grateful for everyone that's come before me. So, yeah, thank you. Well, there we have it, they've done it, Wales are through to the playoffs, Abby, what an incredible feeling, how are you feeling after that match? Yeah, absolutely, it was nervy, it was edgy, but the atmosphere was anything, but it was absolutely incredible to see so many people, so many members of the Red Wall come out for such a historic evening, which is what it is, and you know, Wales in a playoff, look what happened the last time we did that, eh, can we repeat that again? Let's hope so.